All right, so hello, Marie. I want you here. I want you in one of these squares. Hi, <laughs> Quasha. Uh, I would like for you to be in one of these squares. Uh, okay, so. All right. Let me pull up the questions. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming back to episode four of the I've Noticed podcast. Uh, we are missing Miss Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> we have no idea where she is but she should be calling in now she's about to be the Beyonce like she's calling in <laughs> she's calling in now you know um but uh as always uh like my business page the Ashley's Yummy Tummy uh Facebook page the Yummy Tummy YouTube page and subscribe to it because that's why I be uploading the videos the full videos and then breaking them down into like the questions. So just in case you got ADD, you can't sit here and listen to the whole thing or watch the whole thing at one time. I break it down into the questions, you know. Also, the Instagram, Ashley Monique843. You can go to the website, Ashley Jimmy Tummy. And also, um, Miss Whitney here, she has a blog as well. Uh, would you like to talk about that so they can be um sure. know about that as well? Okay, so. I have a blog site. It's called The Polished Gym, and it's a blog site dedicated to helping young career professionals um, become the best version of themselves in life and in their careers. So it's a lot of motivational stuff on there. Some things may be kind of off topic, but all in all, it's a place where I put my thoughts on just things that we probably go through as uh, millennials um, in your careers, all that good jazz. It's really good. Um, I'm trying to ease my way back into uh, blogging more. But definitely check it out. You can find my page. Uh, well, actually, the blog site is www.thepolishedgembrand.com. Uh, and you can follow us on social media, on Facebook, um, The Polished Gem, and on Instagram, The Polished Gem underscore. Right. Thanks, Ash. And Courtney, they can follow you for makeup tips at... <laughs> oh, I, I need to follow for that. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't she look like her? Doesn't she favor oh, her? Yeah, I, I would have never said, thought it didn't say that. She got to She's been there for a while, but I've never heard of But you know what it is? I feel like it's the, the hair. hair. Like your hair. Y'all have the same hair. So that's easier to like put resemblance to you. All you need to do is I not put on some shades. So I'm not going to lie. I started to do a bang. I started to do a bang. Now the shades would do it. The shades oh, would yeah. do it. And I'm gonna be like, I'm like, do you know who this is? Let us in there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get into this. Um, hi everyone that is just joining. Um, as always, you're more than welcome to come up here. You hi, know, um, hi. you're welcome to come up here too. Almost oh, definitely. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, okay, so the first question is and the, we also have a, a question that was done by marie but that's the second question um i just refer re uh reworded it but i'm gonna say it how she originally gave it to us and then i'm gonna you know but the first question is and this is not picking on black women but why don't black women accept criticism very well like somebody could tell us something honestly that could benefit us for the better that could change our whole world that can cause us from not having our car broke down on the side of the road that can cause that can help us like save more money but we'll just be like i got it you know like we just have is it where, where does that come from where does it come from where does it stem from like why are we like that and when I say we, I'm not just necessarily talking about individuals, right. but just you, we, we've seen these people. We know some well, of these people. I can honestly say that was me, where I could not take any type of criticism. I mean, come on, think about how I am right now. You can imagine me back in the day <laughs> with no life experience, not being able to take any criticism from nobody about nothing. <laughs> I'm sensitive. We know this. Like, I'm very sensitive. So I used to be that way, but it wasn't for the reason of like what I think it might be for other. So what was you thinking it was? Me, I'm just sensitive. I don't like hearing judgment against me. That's see, that's, that's, that's the thing I that, I, I, that confuses me. Like when people say judgment, um, I, I don't know. Like because whenever you use the J word, people automatically like, 
only God yeah. can judge me, you know? Like they yeah. automatically get on defense, even though you're saying, can you just pick up the paper, please? No littering sign. Only Josh can, God can tell me there's no littering. <laughs> like, yeah. like, what? It's just extra. So I have uh-huh. you, you grown out of that? I would say, yeah, I've grown out of it. Cause now like, you know, I'm the why person. Like, like someone be like, you know, maybe you shouldn't do like this, <laughs> but why? Like, <laughs> tell me why so I can understand where you're coming from type of thing but back in the day like I did like when I say judgment I didn't like anyone's opinion about me that I didn't agree with that's just the plain simple version of judgment that I have that that was my definition if that makes sense yeah and then you still because on previous episodes you still you make sure you don't remember when we talk about posting things you make sure you don't post things because so people can say something about you you're very particular about that. So you still on the like the fence of like, nah, I'm not with that at all. Yeah. Because I don't like judgment. <laughs> but I think I can accept it better now, but I don't like judgment, period. Okay. Okay. Um, I think it's just I I think so when I first read the question, almost automatically I was just like, now what Ashley gotta put that on black women. <laughs> When I read it, I was like, no, I mean, because I feel like, you know, I feel like a lot of the time, like society in general puts a lot of things on black women. It's almost like they have to keep us in a box. So it's Mm -hmm. like, we're going to, we're going to label them and we're going to label them angry. We're going to label them complicated. We're going to label them. They don't know how to take constructive criticism. You know, they're they're loud, they're this and they're that. So I feel like, you know, although there are some, there, tr- there is truth to stereotypes, I just feel like sometimes like they give us so many labels, you know, to have. But when it comes to the whole, um, you know, not being able to take constructive criticism, um, I, don't, I don't think black women have a problem of taking constructive criticism. Um, I think we have a problem when we feel like people are just trying to talk to us in a way that we don't know something or we are oblivious to something or like we just can't handle it or can't do it you know what I mean like yeah like it's almost like you're trying to like you're trying to talk to me like I don't know what I'm saying or don't know what I'm talking about type of thing I don't think we take too kindly to that because I just think like you know just just for you know being in the black community I just think just being women period you know it's hard because it's like people are auto- automatically are going to think you don't know how to do something just because you're a woman or yeah, you don't that, know certain yeah. things just because you're a woman. And so times it's just like, it can be like, you come off like defensive about it because just like somebody, I mean, nine times out of 10, maybe something, you know, you're talking about something with a car and you know, you might be talking, he'll, he or whoever may be talking to the woman and they'll try to talk to her like, okay, well, maybe she don't really know about cars. But then if she does, then a woman is probably going to come off as if she can't take constructive criticism or she can't take, you know, them saying X, Y, Z, but it's like, I already know it. So instead of you talking to me as if I don't know, if you just ask me like, hey, do you, you know, did you know about this or, you know, X, Y, Z, I think it's just all in how you approach it. I don't think we're just standoffish or can't take critiques just for no reason I just feel like if we feel like you're saying whatever in our best interest we'll listen um at least that's been my experience as a black woman and my experience with the black women around me um I don't really know anybody that's just like not taking crit- constructive criticism you know just be- just because and okay. it depends on who it's coming from too <laughs> yeah I was, I was about to get on that so Marie you said we have been programmed can you explain that a little bit more while we go into a question she said I think it took me getting with my fiance to start working on that because before you couldn't tell me nothing and I think th- what you said Whitney I think that's when it really hits us like when we yeah. are in a relationship with someone a, a, right. you know your partner and then they'd be like why are you not listening <laughs> and like it could be something like you know or either maybe you should but you just been living your life like um I personal experience um I I recently said how can I go 30 like basically 34 years with like being um being like oh you got to do this you got to be independent you got to be self-sufficient you can't depend on no man you got it but you know but then when you meet a guy he's like relax calm down I got it and I'm like 
yeah. no I got <laughs> you know so it, it's, it's so hard like when you've been I doing something you know for so long and then somebody your partner or your spouse comes along and then they be like you don't have to work as hard you don't have to do that but then yeah. be more feminine and that that word kind of I'm like <laughs> <laughs> are you okay Gordon? i'm fine it's like it's like be more feminine i'm like the fuck i look like a stud or something like what's going on like why would you say that yeah and it's because of i wish i wish kiki was here because she loved to be like the what manish you know word yeah, or whatever that hey, word so, i hate you're right and so i'm like i'm like <laughs> so because um i can pay my bills i i'm not pressed to have you around me um i'm not you know when you say something i don't i'm not it's not like every time you say something i have a comeback you know but yeah. it's just like they just want you to be your partner wants you to be more feminine and i'm like do you think it's because it might be i'm not saying it is but do you think it might be because there's this this um stigma almost that they're supposed like we're all supposed to be like strong black women and you know the backbone of everything do you think maybe 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 there's like a majority of black women who don't like getting uh criticism like that because it's almost like that is being questioned in a way or not? honestly the strong black women oh, I, it's, that is such a, a tricky thing because i don't think we according to men that i've been talk, conversing with they're like hush kiki they're like uh they're like we're not supposed to be strong independent women. Like all this education we got, all this 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 money put up and and I'll I'll have a, a, a child later on in life. I'm focused on my career. That's not what they want. They just want us to like look good, do other things good, cook good, and have the house clean. And low key, I'm like, oh no. But now I think I'm, I'm, about to, I'm about to turn in the car and I might be like, oh, okay. <laughs> because it is a lot. It's a lot. But I think the strong independent woman thing happened by accident. Meaning like, and here I go, I just about to start some shit. Oh, Lord. Because the black man wasn't there. He was, gone. He was locked up. He was. In- <laughs> oh, my gosh, you know? Ashley. You definitely about to start some mess on here. <laughs> realistically i think that's what it, because like if you think about it the woman ha- wouldn't have to be so strong if it was a two-parent home uh i mean because typically she's doing it because she has kids you know she gotta feed her kids she gotta take care of herself and all this other stuff like i mean if, i think if you poll women now people who are like phds master degrees like i think those women would probably be like I I don't really I I just want a family <laughs> like I don't yeah. think it's all what it's cracked up to be anymore to be quite honest yeah it's just it's just so much that really goes on to like like of defining like how we got to this point like how we got to be labeled strong you know independent black and independent and like you said like some I'm of like those things because up. yeah like some of those things is because we have to but I also believe like honestly like black women are just like awesome like of course. There's, you're not like we're, we're a different type of, of of woman like you're not gonna get you might get some I mean not saying that you know I understand you know I feel like just saying like black women are strong is really putting a lot on us when we say that but at the end of the day I feel like black women as a whole like we are strong not in a sense that you know give us all the pain and we'll take it and we can come out on top but I just feel like in general like we can make something happen out of nothing like we can we can take we can take something from point a and take it to z and we can make it flip double triple all this other stuff and people like underestimate us so much and that's really like that's really like our secret power though like they underestimate Uh. not just women but really black women underestimate us so much and it's like every time they underestimate us we always come in and save the day we always got to clean up you know everybody black women is black women that when it's time to show up black women are always the first front line, front in line. The crowd. and you know and it's crazy because we will never get the first recognition they'll have to go through everybody else and then they'll be like oh yeah 
this black woman did that when all along it was us the whole time right that's how i be so, with some guys i'd be like where your mom at where, where, where your sister at because like yeah. when they talk so much cash shit about black women i'd be like where your, where your mom at yes like i mean black women is it and that's that's just my thing like and i feel like even as like when you're going in a relationship it takes it, it really does take a certain type of, of man to date a black woman. And, you know, mm -hmm. I understand that everybody's experiences are different. You know, us is like, I mean, we come from different backgrounds, but it's just like a, a certain level that you have to have when dealing with a black woman. You know, especially when they, if you're going into those quote unquote stereotypes of being strong and independent, you know, I feel like a black woman, you can be strong and independent and still keep your femininity. It doesn't have to be like, mm -hmm. Being strong and independent doesn't necessarily mean you're the type of woman that's saying, oh, no, I don't need a man. I can do it all by myself. It's just letting you know that, no, I don't depend I on you, but you can still treat me like you're a partner. You still treat me like the woman that I am. But you should be confident or, or feel comfortable about that as a man, knowing that, you know, if something happened and you in a situation like I can depend on my spouse, not that like you could say, oh, I'm the man if something happened, like, I don't know what we're going right. to do because she can't do nothing. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to get too many black women like that. Even if the woman is not working, Listen. a black woman is going to make something shake if you leave her high look, dry. Or, se look, uh, selling dinners, uh, braiding hair, anything. babysitting. Like, she's so, going to get the bills. She's going to come out with her for jobs. Like, that is something you do not even have to worry about. Something is going to shake. <laughs> like, right. I, honestly, like, I know the little phrase, like, little cliche thing or whatever is like, um, I want guys be like I want to ride or die. Like honestly, I think that's just in a black woman's DNA. Like I, mean, I just it's just it you really know. is. Like it really the ride or die, and it's just like it's just it's just that some people take advantage of it. You know? Oh, that's all. Oh, no, they definitely do. Like, like, yeah, have y'all yeah. seen that video? Them little boys, and it's like three little boys, and the oldest one like they young, right? And he goes, "I'll die for you, ma." Oh, oh yeah, I saw that. Oh, I like a, a, a set of twins or triplets or something right. like that. And he was like, die. <laughs> no, at a young of, age, that. that ain't for him. <laughs> oh, you said that. That. I <laughs> right. Like I I think but the 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 term like ride or die is always like used negatively, like you know, in some criminal activity, Bonnie and Clyde right, type yeah. stuff. But like when I say uh it's like in our DNA, it's just like you we, we, maybe that's why they kind of do treat us a certain type of way like because they know we not gonna go nowhere like we're gonna try to fight and, and make it work and do what we need to do you know but um but like r kelly say when a woman's fed up that's when we out there you know we because we don't went through so much you yeah. know for us to get to that breaking point and whatnot um i hear you with and me. we are feminine too i hate when people try to make it seem like we're not feminine like because of the, the the traditional, which I don't get guys our age talking about some traditional stuff. Like what are, you don't even and they know don't even life. know about traditional stuff. Thank they only you. they only pick and pull apart like the things they want to stay traditional to. Like they want to stay traditional when it comes to okay, yes, I want a woman to stick by me. I want them to have my kids. I want them to cook, clean, and all these other things. But when it comes to like the things you're supposed to do as a man, especially you know, it's, it's a thousand ways we can go with it but especially when it comes to taking care of the household and bills when you really oh, start yeah. talking about money to men that's oh, when God. they start trying to pull back like don't pull back now. I, need a you said, I need that don't don't <laughs> you <laughs> said you wanted traditional and with no 50 50 splitting going on traditional the no. man was taking care of the bills the woman was taking care of the kids in the house and that's the way it was that was but it now, yeah. yeah now when you start talking about roles as far as you know paying for bill i mean uh taking care of the bills and stuff you know now they want to back up like okay now i want you to cook clean but now we got to go 50 50 on the yeah, bill 50, 50. you want to equal yeah. right right <laughs> and 50, look, at 50. one point i was like who said who, who fought for us to have equal rights because i probably want to <laughs> stay home right now you know well, who said i want to i, I want to vote there's some rights i i would want to vote and you know um you know like honestly like one of the things that I talk about now, like speaking with the femininity and like, you know, yeah. being a lady and a woman and stuff, because I have, I, like being transparent, I've had guys, you know, uh, say things to me that were kind of like hurtful, you know, yeah. but it, crushed, it made me be like, should I not have businesses? Should I not do this? Should I just go ahead and have kids? Should I just like, like try to yeah. mind fuck me? 
into yeah, what they want I feel me to you, do. Ashley. I you feel know? you, yeah. And so I'm like, oh, and, and then when I start feeling like that, I'm like, oh, I don't like this feeling. And I, you know, I talk to them, you know, but most guys don't know how to communicate, you know. So I just be like, this ain't gonna work, you know. Um, because if anything, I want a man that's gonna come and add on, not add on no stress, not add on no baggage, but be like, because my my love, I think we did we talk about love language yet? No, we, I don't think we did. Maybe okay, well, my, did. yeah, we okay. did like way in the beginning, but oh, okay. like we touched okay. on it. We didn't really talk about it, talk about it. Okay, well, my love language, like love language is acts of service. Like I what I need you to without me even having to say it, like see what I what needs done, and then you just do it. That's one less thing off of me, you know. But um I don't I don't know, like I, I just don't like when guys downplay it and make it seem like I'm not like a girl girl. You know, a, a, I don't want to be a girly girl. I know that's not me. I know that's not me. But I'm a businesswoman. And when guys start talking about stuff, they be like, oh, once you start talking about money and finances, I'm a gold digger. If I was a gold digger, I would not yeah. be talking to you. And you stay with your mama. And you're making $10 an hour. No offense to people who stay with their mom and make ten dollars an hour, but I'm just saying, if I was a gold digger, my standards would be a little bit higher. That's all I'm saying. So I hate that. So when you start talking about finances with men, they will get so upset. Yeah, they really do. That and they get that's that's the one thing like they go to like when you when they when you start talking about the money part, like they'll try to like beat you down to like you don't even deserve two pennies to rub together like you just gotta just take whatever and it's just like and the other side of it too I'm just like you know I understand people who like debating and they like talking about these type of things but my thing is like you know you gotta know your place like if you know you're not the type of guy every every guy is not gonna be the type of guy that wants to take care of all the bills in the house that's fine Find you somebody, who, find a mate who wants the same things and the same dynamics in a relationship that you want. But don't say, oh, you still another man that's taking care of all the bills while his woman is staying home and doing whatever. Don't look down on what they're doing. Like, that's just something right. that works for them. Like, find right, whatever right. works for you. That's not saying every guy has to be the one that's paying all the bills. Some some women don't want that. Some women feel like, okay, no, I got to pay for something because you're going to think you own something if you pay for it. And they do. And yeah. they do. I don't care yeah. what they say. And they do. Yeah, some women are not even going to want you to take care of it. So it's just like, you really just have to find whatever works for you. But that doesn't necessarily say, you know, I don't know about the language on here, but that don't necessarily mean you got to shit on what somebody else doing just because it's not what you would do. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. and it, and people live their lives so differently. Like everybody household is like different, you know? Yeah. And then, but when you come together, it's like a little click. You're like, what y'all do? Oh, okay, that works for y'all. Well, I've never heard of that, but great great and that's why and that's why too Ashley like that's why it's also good like your experiences I think I say this before but your experiences are going to be different depending Mm -hmm. on what you have around you so it's just like for me I have a lot of 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 you know beautiful strong black women women from all like walks of life and so like my idea when it comes to like relationships and things may be different than somebody who may not even have the exposure to people being in a monogamous relationship. They're right. not used to somebody seeing you somebody so in a healthy right. relationship. They're not used to seeing the guy cater to the woman. They're not used to seeing a woman take care of her man. They're not used to seeing those things. So when you start talking about them, it seems foreign to them. Like, what? Don't nobody do that. Women don't do that. And you're just I thinking like, yes, women do that. Like that. Or the other side of it, you're just like, oh, men don't do that. Men don't know how to do this. And it's just mm-hmm. like, um, yeah, I know a, a good bit of men who do. So it's just your experiences and the people right. around you really shape your perspective. So if you don't really have the people around you or in your circle or know somebody, like your idea of what a relationship is, is going to be so different than the next person. You are so right because like I said, I'm in my little dating phase or whatever. And when I meet guys, men who parents are still together, I said, I get this. I I'd be like, fuck him. I I'd be like, focus on his parents. I'd be like, so how long have they been together? How old are you? Like, cause I'm because I don't have people around me that has been married for like a long time. Right, like, yeah. And then I told you if they're married, they're like black people divorce which i know y'all was like what is black people divorce? Yeah. <laughs> well from my culture from around me it's where they're still married 
he got his girlfriend, she got her boyfriend, but they still legally married. They're not getting yeah. a divorce because she wanted social security because she say he ain't shit until he die anyway, you know. Like that's yeah. how the black women that I know around, you know, but so I'm always fascinated by um I know this is gonna sound so crazy. I'd be so fascinated by black men that come from two parent households because I'm like, how was it? <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. I'm serious. I, because, I, I get you, Ashley. Yeah. I have that around me. Like, I don't, and it's really crazy. Know. Yeah. And not even just like the like like another guy, but like to me, it was that way, like from just people in general coming from like, so I was raised by my grandparents. You know, I had both of them, my grandma and my grandpa. But mm-hmm. you know, it's different when it's your actual parent. parent. And so right. even when I'm like, even when I was in school, I'm like, dang, like I was just like watching. It's like, oh dang, you know, their parents actually come to like these meetings. Like they have people actually coming in with their parents coming to watch their games and stuff. And you know, <laughs> helping so- them, like helping them with homework and stuff. I'm just like, I do this by myself. Like y'all have people actually helping y'all do homework, just- what? Courtney, what's your experience? Like, is this like foreign to you? I was in a single parent household. Huh? I was in a single parent household. But I'm saying, but when she's talking about like homework and stuff like, so your, or was your mom like, was she like the busy single mom or was she like, she had oh, time yeah. for you? Yeah. I mean, think about it. She had time, but she was busy. I mean, she's military. Like she, she's busy. Oh, um, that's like, what I believe. But I was still elementary school. I had to go to after school program, you know, but then she would pick me up from there instead of, so yeah. She, yeah work. So she was busy. But I mean, so was my dad. So like I was with her most of the time. Like, I guess it's not so foreign to me because my parents are both actively in my life still. I know it's not the okay. case only when parents yeah. separate or, you know, get a divorce. Right. So yeah. But my experience, I guess, is different from a lot a lot of people because mine was as normal as it could be without living in the same household so maybe that's why I'm just like I've seen it you know what I mean like I've seen so they were great co-parents yeah yeah okay that's that's another that's a whole nother topic but in order for us to talk about that we need parents up here because I already know they're gonna tear into my ass about it but luckily Uh -uh, uh-uh child we don't need nobody parents up here (laughs) no I mean like I mean like People who like mom and dads, like who are who who are co parenting, like currently. Oh, okay, like, okay, yeah. Age that's like that does oh, have I a see, positive. I see. I was about to yeah. Say, oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, okay, so uh, basically wrapping it up, uh, the question was, uh, why don't black women accept criticism? Well, I think we all agree that we do, but it's just basically how you present it, it's all about your delivery, like the person who's delivering the message and article us to receive it. You know, if you come in positively then we'll accept it positively but you come in negatively you know what's gonna happen <laughs> you know all right so let's move on to the second question um